morning, I have the good to be with you again. I bring greetings to your pastor as we continue to lift up the prayers for you that should be here next week. It's just, I think it's precious to stand behind the sacred desk in this special place. But I ask that you be prayerful through the thoughts as I grapple with the rest of this text. Something that came up called touch. So let us bow. Lovely and gracious God, we thank you for this sacred time. We thank you, oh God, for the way that you show up and you show out. I ask that you fill me with your spirit till it's overflowing, oh God. To so those who hear me, hear you. It is not a path in my heart. I thank you, praise you. It is in Jesus' name. We pray with thanks to you. Amen. Touch. There's a movie made in 2004 entitled Crash. Crash is a 2004 drama filled with racial and social tension in Los Angeles, California. The movie Crash was inspired by a real life incident in which a Porsche was carjacked outside a video store on Wall Street Boulevard way back in 1991. After Don Shiro, which is the main focus of the character, has a character named Graham. In the movie, Cheeto or Graham opens the movie by saying, it's the sense of touch. In any real city, you walk, you know, you brush past people, people bump into you. In LA, nobody touches you. We're always behind metal and glass. I think we miss touch so much that we crash into each other just so that we can feel something. It's Chino's word, a sense of touch, that drew me to this movie. And the statement of the sense of touch leads me into our text today. Beloved, we brush past each other on a pedway of life. A pedway is a short pedestrian, a short pedestrian walkway. It's a dedicated path or passage designed for foot traffic. It's often found in many cities and can be above ground at street level or underground. Pedways provide safe, convenient, and often weather protected routes for pedestrians connecting buildings, transit stations, shopping centers, and other key points within the city. In some cities, pedways are extensive networks that allow people to move through large areas without having to walk on the streets. A pedway is a moving sidewalk that you find at airports, which aids you in those long walks from gate when you fly out of midway, gate A, B, or C, or when you fly out of the C terminal in O'Hare. The purpose of pedways is to make that long walk to your gate tolerable. Pedways remind me of a pedway of life. In the pedways of life, we pass each other heading in opposite directions. Some of our pedways move us quickly past people, while other pedways move us slowly past people. In other words, we are people's lives for a reason and or for a season. Due to a speed and hurried lives, we pass each other, yet we don't touch each other in meaningful ways. For the next few moments, I'm going to talk about this thing called touch. You see, in our text today, Jesus performed two healings. Both of these healings were done as a result of a touch. The first healing occurred with the one ruler of the synagogue, Jairus. Jairus saw Jesus and told him that his little daughter lies at the point of death. He wanted Jesus to go to his house, lay hands on her, so that she would live and be well. As Jesus was on his way to the house of Jairus, a woman interrupted him and had a flow of blood for 12 years. As the text says, she suffered many things and has spent all that she had, but was still getting worse. The text says that when the crowd, when Jesus heard this lady come up behind him, felt the healing, she felt the healing. All she had to do was touch his clothes, touch his garment, and she would be made healed. The text says that immediately the fountain of blood in her was dried up. She felt in her body and she felt healed of her affliction. See, Jesus immediately feeling, knowing that virtual power had moved from him, 
turned around and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said, you see him, you see Jesus, the multitude throwing me in, people crowding and bumping into you. How can you say, who touched me? These words are similar to John Shields' words in the movie Crash that I mentioned before. In our text, Jesus looked around to see who had done this. The woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell on her knees and told the whole truth. The second healing came shortly after this. The text says that while Jesus was still speaking to the woman, the ruler Jairus was informed that his daughter had just died. Jesus told Jairus not to be afraid, just believe. When Jesus got to the home, he told those who were there in the home praying out loud that this child was not dead, just sleeping. Then Jesus took the child by the hand and told him to rise. Both were healed by a touch. The woman with the issue of blood touched Jesus' clothes, and Jesus took the little girl by the hand. Church. There are certain ways that we touch each other. And when we've really have been touched in a special way, we know that we've been really touched. When you've been really touched by someone, you feel different. There are times when our touches are meaningful, just like when we pass the peace. There are times when they're often just surface. When a touch pierces the surface of our skin, and stirs in our spirit something miraculously happens. Let me say a little bit more about touch. I want to say four things and then I'll take my seat. The first thing I want to say about touch is that physical touch is essential to humans for several reasons. The woman with the issue of blood knew that she would regain her respect and her dignity if only she could physically touch Jesus' garments. She didn't need Jesus to touch her to be healed. She just needed to get close enough to touch Jesus herself with her own hands. She didn't need his hands. Her hands were sufficient. If she could just get close enough to touch a piece of his clothing. As she reached out and touched Jesus' garments, Something happened to her. Her illness went away because her touch drew something out of Jesus. It drew life, saving, healing power from Jesus. Church, we don't need a special prayer service or lots of oil with fancy and specially crafted words. All we need is faith. Faith in our hearts that if we could only get close enough to Jesus, that we could be healed. I'm not talking about a physical closeness. I'm now speaking about a closeness in our hearts. I read an Oswald Chambers devotional that I do my up, called My Utmost for His Highest, that God wants us to be so rightly related to God that we don't even have to ask God's will in a particular circumstance, that we will know God's will because of our right relation. That right relation is obtained by maintaining spiritual disciplines, a regular worship attendance, prayer, meditation, and Bible study. It's that right relation that moves the sense of touch past our skin and into our spirit. Francis Frederick Payne, a Christian pastor and author, often discusses the concept of the three parts of a human being, the spirit, the soul, and the body. This trichotomy is a common theme in Christian theology and spiritual teaching. Here's a brief overview. The spirit, which is the pneuma, which is the innermost part of us, which is created to have fellowship with God. The spirit is considered the innermost part of a person, that aspect that is capable of having a relationship with God. 
is often seen as the part that is reborn or renewed through faith and salvation. Then there's the soul or the psyche, which has three parts, our intellect, our will, and our emotions. Our soul is that part of us that has ruled us since the fall in the garden. The soul of the Christian is in a state of being straightened out all our lives. It's a mixture of good and of evil. The soul includes the mind, the will, and the emotions. It is the seat of the personality and the individual identity. The soul is often seen as the intermediary between the spirit and the body, but yet it has influence over both. Then there is the body of a soul. That's the area that has the five senses, our taste, our touch, our smell, our sight, and our hearing. The body is the physical part of a person, that part of it that interacts with the physical world. It is often seen as the temple of the spirit and the soul of believers. We're often encouraged to take care of our bodies as part of our spiritual practice. Frankie Payne emphasizes the importance of aligning all three of these together in a harmonious relationship, where the spirit is influenced by the Holy Spirit, leads the soul and the body into alignment with God. See, the alignment is seen as a crucial for our spiritual growth and maturity. Physical touch moves our psyche or our intellect and will of our emotions. Physical touch encompasses many emotional, physiological, and psychological aspects. The emotional touch fosters intimacy and bond. Emotional touch releases oxytocin, which is often said to be the love hormone. Emotional touch promotes feelings of closeness and trust. Today, beloved, many of our touches lack emotion. Feelings of closeness and trust seem to be rare, especially nowadays. Today it seems as if the social media is drawing us away from each other. Everywhere you go today, you see the vast majority of people on their phone or on their mobile device. Our mobile devices are distancing us from each other. We're not talking to each other. We're not touching one another. We desire closeness and trust, which comes when we are emotionally connected, not just physically. I think the pandemic conditioned us not to get physically close to each other. Yes, we're worried about passing viruses, but something happened in our psyche. The pandemic made us conscious that about shaking hands, made us conscious about hugging, made us conscious about coughing and sneezing. Let's go back, beloved, to shaking each other's hands in some shape, form, or fashion. Let's go back to hugging one another. Physical touch is an irreplaceable aspect of human connection and emotional well-being. When we hold hands in a cuddle, we are given and sending a gentle message that our touch provides a sense of intimacy and affection, which in turn reinforces the emotional connection and trust within a relationship. The second thing I want to say is that touch reduces stress. Physical touch can reduce levels of cortisol, a stress hormone, thereby helping to alleviate anxiety and stress. The power in a hug is unbelievable. Beloved, when we embrace one another, we connect with each other's psyche by creating a sense of safety, trust, and comfort. Research has helped to verify that hugging releases this oxytocin, referred to as the love hormone. Physical contact created when we hug can alleviate symptoms of stress, and contribute to improved mental and emotional well-being. The third thing that the physical touch does is it helps with mental health. Regular physical contact is linked to lower rates of depression 
and anxiety. It provides comfort and reassurance, which can improve overall mental well-being. Physical touch, like hugging, can also play a significant role in social bonding. Hugging strengthens the bond between individuals, along with enhancing relationships, and promotes overall feelings of happiness and contentment. The physical touch of hugging also fosters a sense of connection and belonging, which reminds us that we are not in this world alone. And the last thing I want to say is that touch can help our physical health. Touch, beloved can boost our immune system, lower our blood pressure, and reduce our heart rate, contributing to better overall health. These benefits highlight why touch is a fundamental human need, which influences many facets of our lives. Just like the woman that had the issue of blood, just like the little girl that was healed through a touch. Let's reach out and find ways to touch one another today. That we can live in a world that embraces love, that encourages love, and that allows love to be at the core of everything.